I'm Kevin Shaw, and you're watching the Watercraft Journal. Well before COVID lockdowns encouraged tens of thousands of people to explore local lakes and waterways, recreational boat sales were already steadily climbing. And of those sales, pontoon boats equated for an overwhelming majority. Those with access to calmer waters gravitated towards pontoons and sportier tritunes over the past decade, particularly as the quality of materials, accessories, and ease of use all progressed. Within a decade, pontoons calculated for a massive segment of the recreational boating community, and power sports manufacturers all took notice. Yet it was one key element that stood out to the product planners and engineers at BRP. That was that as amenities and performance options for pontoon boats all increased, the pricing multiplied to the point that entry and mid-level buyers were pushed out of the market. Wanting to address this segment square on the chin, SeaDoo applied some of its spark mojo into developing a whole new segment of Tritunes, the SeaDoo Switch series. Employing its popular powertrains and Polytech materials, these jet-driven tri-hull pontoons are poised to shake up the pontoon industry. Being the world's most popular personal watercraft magazine, the Watercraft Journal was invited to fly out to Lake Minnetonka, Minnesota to test drive a handful of Switch models since there are three different length platforms, those being 13, 16, and 19 feet, the latter two being able to be fitted with a two foot swim deck, increasing the overall length to 18 and 21 feet when equipped. The longer of these two different length platforms can be equipped with specially equipped package groups, namely sport and cruise, as well as a wide variety of optional sub packages, but more on those in a minute. BRP began by developing a configurable chassis that allowed for quick assembly, despite the desired vessel length or trim package. Cast from SeaDoo's proprietary Polytech polypropylene material, the center hull sits 4 inches deeper in the water than the modular outriggers, keeping the jet pump engaged for continual thrust. The hull itself is progressive, with a mild dead rise, featuring prominent shelf chines for the utmost stability. At speed, the different length hulls come to plane a little differently, but all allow for a gentle inside lean when throttled into the corner. The hull literally sits inside of the deck, fastened together at what might be considered the bond line in a personal watercraft. The center hull contains the 29 gallon fuel cell and 1630 ACE powertrain. All switch models are configurable, with one of either three engine options, the 100 horsepower 1630 ACE, the 170 horsepower variant, and the supercharged and intercooled 230 horsepower 1630 ACE three-cylinder four-stroke. And to remain compliant with the strictest emission laws, SeaDoo has engineered a high-flow catalytic converter equipped exhaust system that also manages to reduce engine noise and drone. The outriggers are less like traditional pontoons as they are not watertight, but rather a paneled Polytech framework that have been tightly packed with high-density foam and feature a unique serrated surface to break up drag, much in the same vein as the shark gills on the revised T3R hull beneath the current RXPX300. The result is a smooth, predictable ride that traverses mile lake chop firmly and predictably. While the modular framework did flex and chatter a little in rougher water, it never bounced or jostled erratically, delivering a very enjoyable, and in the case of the 13-footer, thrilling ride. While all this is very cool in its own right, it's the ultra-configurable deck which allows the customized seating and accessory integration that is the real star here. SeaDoo's team demonstrated how the deck can be fitted with a variety of benches, tables, and every link accessory imaginable, and all available through a collection of packages or individually through the catalog. Each item securing firmly to the deck using the new 16-inch modular link tiles. This feature permits anyone to literally design and construct their own custom configuration, truly making every switch pontoon unique. Each chair has a small storage cubby beneath its removable seat. The chair itself can be released from its perch by pulling on the neon handle and relocated to any spot with the corresponding receptacles. The same goes for the deck level lounge backrest. Simply pull the handle and move it over to a new location. 
The padded lounge deck panels have small plastic teeth at all four corners that snap into place with a tiny bit of pressure. On higher tier packages, corner tables either with integrated Bluetooth speakers or extra storage and cup holders are also available. In several trim levels, a folding rear bench seat comes standard. As to storage, each switch, regardless of length or trim, contains a spacious 105.9 gallon cargo area that's accessible by wide removable panels. Inside can accommodate multiple life vests, an inflatable tube and tow rope, dry bags, and much more. At the bow is a standard feature on all models, a full-size marine grade anchor and 100 foot line. This way, you're not having to drag a muddy anchor onto your switch's deck, but tuck it away in its own compartment. We were particularly fond of the new Link dock bumpers that snap onto the fence railings or can dangle on short ropes to deflect impact at lower height docks. While the features will increase with each tier of the trim level scale, every sea switch comes with a retractable swim ladder that tucks neatly into the rear, and every captain's console includes a sea watercraft style handlebar instead of a traditional helm. Although some bristled at the idea, the watercraft handlebars worked very intuitively and of course, included sea intelligent brake and reverse system, making the Switch the only pontoon boat with brakes. Equally, every Switch comes with IDF, the intelligent debris-free system debuted only a year previous, and the cost of every Switch includes a trailer to tow it with. The base Switch starts with an entry MSRP of $17,999 and can be ordered at either 13, 16, or 19 feet in length. Two engine options are also available, the 100 or 170 horsepower 1630 Ace. Capable of seating between five and nine passengers, depending on length of course, the base switch is only available in Caribbean blue. The Switch Sport, with a base MSRP of $23,999, comes in at either 13, 18, or 21 feet in length, seats the same as the base model, and can be optioned with either 170 or 230 horsepower. Each Sport comes equipped with a quick attach inflatable holder for tube storage, a review mirror, and sea exclusive ski mode, and is available in either Caribbean Blue, Neon Yellow, or Coral Blast. The highest tier switch group is the Cruise, which promises to take the party up several notches, with included additions like the collapsible Bimini Top, Swim Platform, Sound System, Garmin GPS navigation, and more seating and tables. The Cruise begins with an MSRP of $26,999 and is available in either 18 or 21 feet lengths, as well as a choice of powertrains, 100 horsepower at 18 feet, 170 horsepower 18 and 21 feet, and 230 horsepower 21 feet. Although we seriously recommend the two high outputs, the 100 horse option is just not enough to get your party moving. Additionally, there are three cruise accessory packages, the Family, Water Sports and Fun, and Comfort, that all plus your switch accordingly. All models are available in Caribbean Blue, Neon Yellow, and Coral Blast. When it came to on-the-water speeds, SeaDoo had provided us with some rough estimates, namely 26 to 28 miles per hour for boats equipped with the 100 horsepower ACE motor, 34 to 44 miles per hour with those running the 170 horse ACE engine, and upwards to 44 to 46 miles per hour with those pushing 230 horsepower. Obviously, those ranges depended upon the length of the hull and how heavily it was equipped. For our testing, the 100 horse 16 footer never saw above 18 miles per hour with four adults aboard. Meanwhile, the 230 horsepower 18 foot Sport saw 43 miles per hour with a full crew. The other 230 horsepower model, a 21 foot cruise, ran a steady 40 miles per hour with five adults aboard. Now when it came to a fun playful ride, it was the 170 horsepower 13 foot sport that really shined. Even with three other adults on board, the 13 foot sport could whip a tight hairpin turn, bounce over chop, and cut a tight figure eight. With 230 horsepower on tap, the longer 18-foot Sport made for a spirited ride without losing its footing. Although we enjoyed the premium seating and long shaded deck of the full-length cruise, the mid-sized Sport, with its top-tier powertrain, managed to check every box that we could dream up. With seemingly miles of options and endless configurations, it's almost impossible for us to tell you which model and accessory package is the ultimate one to get. 
and we didn't even get to try out every option that's available. When it comes to choosing a Switch, you really need to spend some time on Seedoo's redesigned website and frankly build your own. And don't get too stressed out because the way the Switch is made, you can literally switch it up with each new accessory or piece of deck furniture anytime you want. I'm Kevin Shaw and you've been watching the Watercraft Journal. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, please make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the videos that we publish every day, six days a week. And if you want even more jet ski content, please check us out at www.watercraftjournal.com where new articles are written and published every day, Monday through Friday, entirely subscription free to you.